Thanks. It's 531. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Um, starting off, let's start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Vice Chair Robin, can you lead us today, if you mind? Certainly, certainly. There's a flag. <laughs> ah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation mm -hmm. under God, mm -hmm. indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Um, next, I'll hand it to Melissa to do a roll call for today. Yes. Commissioner Caballeros? Present. Commissioner Davis? Present. Commissioner Butterer? Present. Commissioner Marshall? is not in attendance today. Commissioner Sipkins? Present. Commissioner Thickpin? She's not in attendance today. Commissioner Wolfer? Present. Commissioner Hopkins? Is not in attendance today. Commissioner Newby? Here. Vice Chair Robin? Yes, present. Chair Soto. Present here. Okay. Great. All right. Well, um, next is the acceptance of the agenda. The Measure J Commission will discuss the order of the agenda and may amend the order, add items, or may remove items from the agenda for discussion. Make it um, a motion or any recommendations on changes. I move to accept the agenda. Great, right. thank you, Commissioner Sipkins. Can I get a second? Second. That was Davis. Aye. Yes. Aye. Yeah, aye. Any nays or abstentions? Great. Okay, so that takes us to public comment. This time has been set aside for members of the public to address the Measure J Commission on agenda items and items of general interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of this commission. And although the commission values your comments pursuant to the Brown Act, it generally cannot take any action on items that are not listed on the posted agenda that could have been just approved. Three minutes are available for each speaker. I think we had a couple people who are going to be present for the meeting. Did they want to speak today, Melissa? And are they on? They are on, but they did not register for any public comments. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so just brief welcome. It's December 21st. Way to stick it in at the last second before the holidays. Really appreciate um, you're all giving out your time and attention, especially as the second meeting of the month. Um, so just kind of want to start with that. And I also want to express my gratitude for um, just a really thoughtful discussion on the 14th on the um, Plaza Theater. I think it was a real, um, just like the whole point of our commission is to provide oversight and give recommendations to the council, which council really values and appreciates and actually followed for this um, proposal. So um, just big thank you again. And with that, I'm gonna bring it over to new business, um, which is the, um, the budget update. And I'm gonna hand it over to Chris, um, as I know. Well, Thanks, Chair guys. Soto. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, Melissa, I think Teresa's in the waiting room. If you can promote her in, that'd be great. <clears throat> Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through it really quickly. Uh, but I just want to, you know, kind of echo Chair Soto's comments. Congratulations to the commission for a great recommendation to the council for the Plaza Theater. Um, it was a very important project, as you know, as you probably saw the council deliberate. They're very interested in it. And uh, so just thank you, uh, all the discussion. We know it was brought to you at the last minute, and we apologize for that. Nothing really could have been done about that. But thank you uh, all for, for giving such a great recommendation. The council accepted it, and uh, I, I think you all should be very proud of that recommendation. So thank you. Um. So I'm just going to go through this really quick. I know it's holiday weekend. Everybody's ready to go. So uh, let's just go through this quick. Um, 
Our total revenue that we are looking at is four point four million dollars. Uh, it's a it is a couple hundred thousand dollars down from last year. We're seeing sales tax down overall across the city. Uh, we think that might rebound rebound in this fourth quarter of this uh, of this year. So we're hoping that happens. Um, uh, we'll continue to provide these financials and and hopefully see that number grow to be more like last year. Um, on the street repairs expense right here, 62000 I know Joel is going to be issuing a contract soon. So that will be at, uh, that's going to ramp up really quickly once they get started on those repairs. Community initiated projects at $310,000. i will show you where that spend is going here in a few minutes. And then we got $3.4 million uh, in capital spend right now, which is really good. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, we're, we're tracking to budget. We're down 1.1 million, but uh, just keep in mind, as you can see over here on the budget, we did budget for a deficit of 2.8 million. As our sale tax sales tax starts coming back, uh, we'll probably see this number uh, uh, be a little bit smaller. Uh, going over the projects, I'm going to look at this third column over right here where it says actuals just so you can kind of gauge at where some of the spend is. And you can see this $2.7 million number for the rec recreational LD lighting. That is the project that we're upgrading all of the lighting at the parks uh, to LED. And that is progressing pretty quickly. Um, other than that, uh, we've got 573,000 in the, uh, the Arnico track sewer. So that's progressing and almost completed. And as you can see in, in the status column here, we've got a lot of things that are in process and in design. And mm -hmm. Joel's team is is, is extremely busy. So um, if you have any questions about any projects later, we can have Joel speak to that. Uh, community initiated projects, as you can see, as you guys well know, you were very uh, um, committed to keeping that bucket of money and the council completely agreed with your decision. So very good. Uh, you can see that where a lot some of the spend is this right now is the boys and girls drainage club is finished and we're just seeing some final expenditures come through and then right now we're looking at the demuth dog park upgrades at a hundred thousand that's coming along very nicely and then the swim center locker rooms and the fencing is beginning right now as well so uh these projects are um uh, up and running and they're moving right along and so we're happy uh, that that's happening um, right now. I will say, we'll go back up here and look at this 484,000 when it says carryover. That's attributed to some street, some pedestrian enhancements that Joel's team's doing. So uh, they're progressing on that on, and, and spending that money. Uh, we have $1.4 million left over. We got 500,000 now. So that project will probably be complete soon. Other than that, I am going to open it up for any questions. You can ask me questions about the finances. You can ask Joelle questions about projects. Um, uh, just open it up for questions. Davis. Um, Chris, I didn't notice the the airport project. I think we talked about a couple of months ago that the fuel tax reserve is paying for it. That's just not reflected in here yet. Correct. Yeah, that's correct. We, uh, they... What, what's going to happen is uh, the airport team is going to take that to city council to get approved. Okay. Uh, and that's I, I believe that they're thinking about doing that in late January or early February. So once that gets approved by council, because they're the final approval, approving body, uh, mm -hmm. then we'll begin to uh, put that project on here and, um, and track that spend. I don't know. I, I believe their intention is to kind of finish this master plan. I don't know when that project is going to actually start. Uh, we'll have Harry uh, uh, or Jeremy here at a meeting in the next uh, in, in the next quarter of next year to give us an update on where they stand after they go to council. And he can give us an update on when that construction will start. But I know they're very heavily focused on getting their master plan completed right now. And when will you know the actual fund balance, not just what we were Estimating. Oh, yeah, that's a great question, Andrea. And so we're hiring an, uh, an accountant that is going to be specific to the airport. And so one of the projects that we want that accountant to do after they're here for a while uh, is to uh, dig into that and figure out a process uh, and, and determine what the real balance is. And, um, uh, and, and you know, we'll, we'll put that in, uh, we'll put that out publicly once we find that out. 
and hopefully a methodology for tracking it kind of re in real time going forward. Is that exactly? Good? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, again, and, you know, we're, we're sitting here looking at, you know, uh, 1.5 million and we have no idea. Right. So, uh, well, we're, mm -hmm. we're going to get to that. I know that there's a couple of, um, big, uh, aviation fuelers that are, um, paying a lot of sales tax to the city. So it's very possible that this number is, um, is not enough, but we'll, we'll, we'll we're going to work on that in this fiscal year in these next six months. And we're going to try to determine at least get a process. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Vice chair Robin, I think I saw your hand up before. Just want to clarify if you still had a question. Uh, while, while the last question was being reviewed, I found what I was looking for. So no question. Thank you. Um, I had a quick question and maybe it's for my fellow commissioners. Maybe it's for Joel, um, around, um, the lighting. Um, was that just in like, I, I forget like the scope of that lighting project. And for some reason I thought it was just kind of in the baseball fields. And I didn't know if that was for the full park like I was just kind of wondering how extensive of a park um of as like a lighting assessment re you know um I'd like that a, was across the parks or if it was just in essentially the baseball fields I'm gonna let Joel take that one because I know he can speak to it a lot better than me yeah so it is for the all the lighting in the music park that's uh the essentially a tall lighting it's if you will the baseball fields anything covered by by the bigger lights not we're not doing a whole light assessment of the park since you all the smaller lights we're not looking at that at all okay and the I I just to, right yeah people are just talking about like the lighting is getting all changed at demuth and i was like i, I didn't think that was accurate so no that's not 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 an accurate statement it's more the the big tall lights got it okay all right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. any other questions for joel or chris on the budget or any specific projects mm -hmm. Um, this might be something that, um, I don't know if this is a common or request for agenda item four, just to flag, but given that we do have, um, that community initiated projects, uh, allocation, like confirmed by council and, um, there's kind of a desire to have kind of like a grants process, um, you know, kind of an outsourcing of projects um it would be helpful just to hear maybe like if we could get some guidance as to if and when we can put applications out again for that um if it's possible to do it before the summer is that like a next fall thing um you know just given that we just we do have that um several million dollars left and um and it, we're gonna have it protected it seems so i just want to make sure that we're kind of being communicative to, I know there's a lot of organizations interested in that. So, um, yeah. And we um, does a kind of pushing that forward too. Does a member of the subcommittee want to address that? Uh, if, if they don't, I, I, I can. Linda or Brian or Andrea, did you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I can talk. Um, is my mic on? Good. Um, the subcommittee met again, and once again, it was a really good in depth. Uh, conversation. I think, and I think with the other folks, we should be ready by February, uh, Chairman Soto, to give you a report with documents. That's that's my thinking. We need one more meeting to really firm up all the things we've talked about. So we should be able to present that to you and see what the rest of the commission thinks. And then after that, it's really when you want to start that. And Chris has to donate the money here when it's ready. That's any other, any other, Brian, you want to say anything? Uh, no, I think that's uh, nothing really to add. A very good summary and an overview uh, of where we were. Uh, maybe just the finer points of how we're approaching this is mm -hmm. refreshing the boilerplate package that was put in place uh, last cycle, so three years ago, uh, and modifying that as appropriate for lessons learned from the last time around for, gu for guidance to the quote unquote applicants, uh, and then also having a uh, having a kit 
that can be reviewed with everyone's fresh eyes to then act on it to actually to actually build momentum on this pro project and its process. Yeah, I would further say there are a lot of comments on not only the application and the grants, but also in the process that the commission should be doing to make sure that we vet projects better than perhaps we have in the past. And that would maybe include uh, required visitation from the applicant and also reducing staff time to make them really more accountable for their applications and vetting them in knowing what they're doing with the application, uh, a better price quote. And um, I think we'll come up with that for you by February. I hope so. Okay, that's wonderful. Thank you for that. Well, Commissioner uh, Sipkins. Uh, thank you. I have a question for Chris. I, uh, you said that you were optimistic that sales tax revenues would be increased uh, in fourth quarter of the year. What uh, indicators are there that give you optimism about uh, hopefully getting back on track in terms of receipts? Yeah, so one of the things we've talked about internally and, and we've talked about with some of our vacation rental owners, uh, I was just in a meeting uh, not too long ago, is that this, you know, the summer has been, the summer was pretty stagnant. They didn't have a lot of bookings. They, they couldn't really fill um, their, uh, um, they couldn't really fill their, uh, their homes. So, but on the good side of that, this, fourth quarter this winter uh, and the winter and, and the first quarter and the next year, they're fully booked. So that gives me an indication that, um, that we're, that, that we have a good potential to come back on our sales tax front and really our other taxes too, like TOT. Uh, we, we talked to our, our um, asset management firm, Chandler asset management, and they gave a, they give us a really good economic forecast every quarter and one of the things they said is 2024 is going to be a good baseline year for tax revenue. And, and that the way they're kind of seeing things go is the way we talked about in this vacation rental owners meeting was the summers of Palm Springs, you know, are going to probably pull back to where they were pre-COVID. You're not going to get a whole lot of people here. They don't want to come visit 120 degree weather. However, on the other side of that is your winters and our falls and our springs are going to be booked and they're going to be active. And so uh, it's going to be interesting to see if that comes to fruition. Um, but that's what I'm sort of basing it on is, is I'm think, hearing from our vacation rental industry that they're fully booked this fall, winter. Um, that gives me confidence that uh, we're going to see some improvements in our sales tax. And so we'll just see. <laughs> we'll see how it works. And Thank it's you. also delayed, what, two months, right? That's correct, uh, Chair Soto, you're correct. So any, so the revenue that we are, are showing for November here, that's really sales tax revenue through September because we don't get our sales tax revenue distributed from the state until two months later. Our TOT revenue comes one month later. So that's, we're, and, and we saw in October, that we rebounded really good with our TAT revenue, almost to what was um, what was what was gained la uh, from last year. So that indicator, and then the indicator from our uh, our portfolio managers and our vacational group, I, I think we've got a good uh, I think we've got a good chance of, of bouncing back and seeing some strong revenue in this in this latest quarter and, and into next year. Thank you. Commissioner mm -hmm. Newby. Yes, thank you. I just had a question um, with respect to guidance to community members. Um, are the funds that Major J allocates or that are allocated for Major J projects, are they subject to prevailing wage? Because that can really impact what the final cost might be. I, I am Joel and Teresa, you may be able to answer this, but I'm pretty sure that they are. I think the city attorney has told us any project that we have is subject to our prevailing wage. Uh, Joel, Teresa, do you want to expand on that at all? 
Um, you know, right off the top of my head, I, I think I agree with you, Chris. I, I think we even built that into the agreement when we gave the money out, right? It's a, it's a prevailing wage. Uh, anything with the city, anything with city dollars is prevailing wage. Um, so I, I believe you're, you're correct, Chris, that, that that is the case. Yeah, we, and, and, and that's a great question, uh, Commissioner Newby. I'll confirm with our city attorney, but I, I'm pretty sure that we're right in that, that that anything that we do and that and that's that's you know that's a reason oh excuse me that's a reason why our costs are higher yeah you know, it's not just a natural inflation rate it's it's that as well so mm -hmm. so yeah that that's what i thought was important also to let community applicants know that may not be aware of that the impact of prevailing wage on what their project might ultimately cost yeah great point great point thank you for bringing it up thank you any other questions or comments for Chris or Joel? Okay, so that takes us to um, the discussion items for today, which uh, we have the library renovations and financing options. Um, Chris, I don't know if you want to start us off, or Jeannie, thanks for being yeah. here today. Um, uh, I'll leave it to you two to kind of help help us think uh, through this. Thank you, Chair um, Soto. I'd like Commissioner to Shot. Go ahead. Commissioner Cabrera's. Um, yes, I request to recuse myself from the library discussion. Thank you. You know, a little bit. Thank you, Chair Soto. Um, I want to introduce our library director, Jeannie Kays. Uh, she, you know, as everybody had knows here, and uh, we've been talking about for a long time, we are going to build a beautiful new library and we're happy and we're excited. And part of it is, you know, we want to issue debt for that. And so Jeannie's going to give a, a, an overview of what's going on with that project. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to her right now. Go ahead, Jeannie. Thank you. Um, happy holidays, everybody. Thank you for inviting me. I did want to give you an update about the project so that you're um, just in the loop but about what's happened since we started um, this new renovation. Um, it's a renovation, not a new, new, not new, uh, but new, new to us in the same spot. <laughs> so uh, we have engaged uh, an architect firm called Group 4 Architecture Research. Um, uh, and they are out of um, San Francisco. So we've been working with them this fall. We have um, We've given them some some tasks. So the the tasks that they have, it's kind of it's multi multi layered and complicated. Um, but there are um, there are three aspects of this pro project. The first aspect is that we got a grant. Uh, we got a grant for six point five million dollars from the state of California, the California State Library, to improve the infrastructure of our library. So that's number one. Uh, grant funded. Then um, what do you do with the rest of the library? There's a lot of um, parts of the library that need to be also renovated at the same time that are not included in the grant. So that's part two, the, the unknowns. And then uh, part three, the other project we have is the J.C. Fry building, which you all have allocated some funds for. And we know for sure that that is something we want to do. So we've got these three layers, three things. Um, We've tasked the architects with the 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 assignment. Find out how much the grant funded portion costs. You know, design that. Find out how much it costs. Part two, uh, the things that we want to do to make the library fully renovated within the footprint of the building. Make you know, make it look nice because we can do all of this infrastructure work. We can fix the toilets and the plumbing and the electrical and it will look the same and nobody really would be happy. So we need to, uh, we need a modern library, not a 1975 library with the same carpet. And, and so there's some, the, the main library unknowns. And like I said, the JC Fry, we know that that, that just all needs to be fixed up. So, so those are their assignments defined, undefined. Um, they are, um, they have, been working with us, community groups, they've done surveys, we've reached out, we've interacted with uh, over a thousand people through the surveys and um, community uh, engagement sessions. 
and through our stakeholder groups, which are our um, Library Board of Trustees, our Friends of the Palm Springs Library and our Palm Springs Public Library Foundation, and then members of the city staff and library staff. And so we've um, worked with the architects to uh, come up with what we feel is a good scope of work um, for this project. Now, that means that we are working with them to also help us find out a cost estimate. So uh, we don't have the numbers yet. I know you see numbers in your staff report. Do not focus on those numbers specifically because they're not certain. We're going to get the numbers in the next week that will go to um, be placed into our staff report for city council. So. Um, the numbers we put into the staff report are um, rough order of magnitude, broad, broad ballpark estimates. We don't want you to, to, like I said, laser focus on those yet because we don't know for sure what the numbers are going to be. So we're just here today to update you about this process because we have grant funds. We have some Measure J money. Um, you've allocated some for the J.C. Fry building and you've allocated a, a, a million dollars in miscellaneous use or you did that this spring. So we've got some money allocated to this project, but we know it's gonna cost a lot more. So that's where um, Chris comes in and can talk about um, issuing debt and uh, how we're going to pay for the rest of this and how we want to pay for the rest of this project. Right, so, Chris? Yeah. So uh, commissioners, you're probably thinking, why, why are you telling us this right now? Well, uh, we've tried to try to, you know, talk about, issuing debt for the library. We know it's going to cost more than the $15 million we've got set aside, uh, 9 million of Measure J money, six and a half in grant funds. So we are going to, um, we are going to, at some point, so when we go to council on the 11th, we're going to talk about the scope of work. And then we're going to talk about, you know, a more specific range of dollars that it could cost. Again, Rough order of magnitude, we don't have bids in, um, but we're gonna issue debt at some point this year, I'm sorry, at some point in 2024 for the library. And what we want to do, uh, we want to ask the Measure J Commission because we want the debt service funded by the Measure J Commission. And so we're gonna ask the Measure J Commission at some point when we know good numbers, when we get bids back, and before we go to council to ask for their authority to issue debt, we're going to ask the Measure J Commission to issue a recommendation to the council. And um, <clears throat> just as we did in this uh, past session, we'll have a meeting and we'll have some uh, good discussion. And um, we, uh, you know, as oversight commission for the Measure J funds, we definitely want to get your opinion and we want to get a recommendation from the commissioners of Measure J to the council for the library uh, debt. And once we know good numbers, we'll be able to provide you all with what it was gonna cost. Um, at a high level, I've already modeled this out for years uh, and know that I know an amount that the Measure J Commission, that, that Measure J Fund can support uh, and not affect our fire station as well, because we wanna do that. And at some point in time, we're gonna ask the, the Measure J Commission to uh, make a recommendation to the council to support debt service uh, 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 funding for a new fire station. And so we all have to kind of think of all this together. And uh, and so that's why we're coming to you today is this is what our plan is. Our plan is to go to council, have them sort of approve a scope of work. Um, and I don't want to get in front of council. I don't want to, uh, you know, see what they're going to say or what they're going to do. But um, we're going to ask. And uh, at some point in time, probably closer to the summer, late spring, early summer, we're going to come back and say, OK, this is what we think it's going to cost. We're going to have bids back. Measure J Commission, um, this is what it's going to cost you to fund the debt service. We would like you to make a recommendation to council of yes or no. And that's why we're kind of coming to you today. Uh, honestly, this is the first time we've talked about this publicly. So um, uh, again, we don't want to get ahead of council, but we want to respect the commission and their oversight of the Measure J funds. And um, I'd like for everybody here to, to pay attention to what happens on January 11th when we do take this to council and their comments. 
Um, we're not asking you to do anything today. This is just really kind of a receive and file and informative uh, report to let you know what is coming down the road and what we're going to ask of you down the road. And with that, we'll open it up for any kind of discussion, any kind of questions. You can ask Jeannie, you can ask me. Um, go ahead and open that up. Yeah, a, a couple of maybe just quick clarifying things. We've done this before, right? Didn't we do it for the downtown park? Um, yeah. so maybe you can give some context as to like what that means, just like logistically, how it worked before and you know how many years roughly we were continuing to pay that and just kind Thank of- Thank you, that's a great question. So uh, obviously I wasn't here, some of you might've been here, but we did in the downtown revitalization project. And I'm gonna say, I, I believe if my memory serves me right, it was somewhere in the vicinity of $45 million for that project. And if you see on our financials, we do pay about $3.1 million in debt service, uh, the Measure J Fund does for that downtown revitalization project. So um, it's gonna work in a very similar fashion. What'll happen is uh, we will go to the city council and we'll say, we'll ask them for authority to issue debt. Uh, but prior to that, prior to the council giving us authority, we want the Measure J Commission to recommend a yes or no that the Measure J Fund will appropriate annual dollars for debt service. We're thinking, and this is again, extremely rough numbers. We're thinking it's gonna be somewhere in the vicinity of $2 million. That could be a, a million seven, it could be 2.3, but we think it's gonna be somewhere in the vicinity of 2 million. Um, I've modeled it out. And when I come back to you all and, uh, and ask for your uh, recommendation, I will be sure to be able to speak more intelligently about the numbers. But yes, when the downtown revitalization project happened, it was the same sort of process. Uh, the Measure Day Commission made a recommendation, the city council approved it, and the funding came from uh, the Measure Day sales tax. Well, Vice Chair Robin, uh, if question or comment. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, 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 really, I, I guess a request uh, sometime between Jan 11, Chris, and the time that we have a session devoted to a yes, no vote. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you have these these items that I'm thinking of. They're either in the works or you would naturally do them anyways for council. But uh, the, the request is with sufficient lead time, if we would get from, from you and your team, the summary level sources and uses for the project, we'll call it the library project is one, and the funding and project costs for the fire station when that time is ripe. Uh, but along with that, if you would show for us your layer of your, your baseline pro forma for the next several years, showing the burden of debt service for library and the incremental debt service based on the information you have at the time for the fire station so that we can see what the remainder is, right? The balance, there's a balance that's gonna be available and we have our primary list of roads and park and so on uh, and community to see what really is left over after you add that burden for these good projects and lastly, if you can look look at present that to us with some time for discussion that has the case A, case B of what happens if Measure J is not extended and how that affects the debt service repayment uh, and how that might instead be eased if and when there's a renewal of the program. Uh, that was that was a mouthful, but I I know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. Yeah, and thank you for that, Brian. And absolutely, you know, we're going to model this out, and we will present that to the commission and make sure you all know what what we're doing because essentially what it's going to be. I think we talked about this, Brian, last time in our special meeting for the Plaza Theater is that when we do projects like this, it it will take some money away from maybe Joel's other projects that he wants to do. And we know we need more money for streets in the future too. So, so yeah, I will definitely model this out. Um, we're going to, um, I, I, I'm with my high level modeling I've done now, I'm very confident both projects are not impacted. So I just want to make that very clear uh, right now that 
both projects are not impacted. And so, uh, yes, definitely we'll model that out and I will present to the commission uh, so we can have a good uh, discussion over that. Um, Commissioner Federer. Yes, Director Case, clarify for me, there's a lot of different conversation. These plans are for the main library at building, not a second building, but only for the physical main library. Is that correct, Jeannie? That's a great question. So we we did explore some options. Um, we and um, besides talking about the main library, don't we do still have the JC Fry building? So right, right. that's that's just a given. It's it's got to be done. Um, so we talked about the main library, whether we keep it within its existing footprint or we also add on an event center. And we've talked about that and it has been requested um, at this moment. We don't feel like um, we could include that in this scope of work now in this phase. If, um, if our library foundation um, does a a bang up job doing fundraising and uh, we get a donor and we get some donors to, to raise the money to build an event center, then we'll consider that as a phased approach. Um, but in this scope and this project right now, we're really, we're, we're keeping a placeholder for that, but um, it's not part of the main library project at this moment. Did that answer your question? Well, I think you know my feelings about an administrative building um, with the event center in it. That's why I questioned. Um, you would think about putting that in the main library, Jeannie? An event um, center? Or... No, what we would do is we would um, create a community room that's bigger than the one we have now within our same footprint. So basically, probably where the children's room is would become the community room and... Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of what we're where we're going with that. Mm -hmm. So we still we do need a bigger community room, but um, but to do an event center is uh, really a large jump in price, and um, we just don't, we're just not really prepared to ask for that much. Mm -hmm. If you want to fund it, go ahead. Yes, we'll take it. <laughs> no, I know you know my thoughts on that very well. Oh, you're on mute. And yeah, Teresa's here too. Yeah, I just wanted to reiterate that, good evening, everybody, and happy holidays. Um, that it could be phased. And, and, and the way that they had uh, presented the options, Jeannie's absolutely right. It could be something that could be done later. So um, that's the nice uh, part of the options that were presented. Um, I know that there was. Um... It was like a time crunch with the state grant. Um, I just want to be mindful of how quickly we get this going to be able to take it. Do we do we still think that that deadline is is a hard deadline? Is there? I know like the navigation grant around homelessness got pushed because there was so many supply chain issues. I didn't know if that was something that was a possibility for the library state grant. I getting it done by 2026, 2026 so, makes a little nervous. I will tell you that um, the California State Library is extremely strict on their grant timelines. Um, having said that, our architects are confident that the grant funded portion will be finished within the deadline. They're, they're allowing enough time for all of that. They're, they're working on actually the Santa Ana Library right now. They're, they're, in, um, they're, they're ahead of us in their project. So um, they're seeing the supply chain issues, if there are any, um, they're anticipating all of that. So the, the grant funded portion has to be done by March of 2026, but that doesn't mean the full library doesn't have to be finished by that time. So we can stretch the timeline out to Humpty Dumpty this all back together um, after that, that deadline. So we're, we're, we're aware of it and we're still on track. And then I, this is a question for Chris, and this was something that I um, didn't really understand when we were talking about the Plaza Theater, why there was this conversation around, we've been kind of saving as we go for upcoming infrastructure needs. And now there's just kind of a faster, more efficient process of financing. And I'm, it's not clear to me 
if and when we do both because it sounds like kind of what we're doing now is both where we have we've already put i think like four and a half to the library and that's going to be used and we're going to be financing the rest ideally four and a half million less than we if we didn't have this amount and so can you help me understand as to when we say we're not going to save as we go because we're just going to finance versus like it just seems to me if like there's a 40 million dollar project and we have eight million dollars saved that's great we're only financing 32 million it's i'm a little confused as to like how how to just like think about those yeah so there's two there's two ways cities usually will finance a, a major capital project the pay as you go method is they will set aside some funds every year uh or you know and accumulate those funds on an annual basis and then use that available cash to to build a library uh or the quickest way and the way a lot of municipalities are moving and, and they have and, and you know for years is I want to build a library today. So I'm going to issue debt for this library today uh, because I don't want to make I want to I, I want to have multiple generations who are going to pay, who are going to use the library, pay for the library instead of have one generation, you know, save the money and pay for the library. So a lot of municipalities say, hey, you know, I can do two things. I can have multiple generations pay for my library and I can get my library built tomorrow. And so that's why we would want to issue debt. So in there's two. So in our case, we're kind of doing a combination, right? We're going to go ahead and use our cash that we've set aside because we've got grant funds and we've chosen to match those grant funds. So we're going to go ahead and use the $15 million that we have set aside and we're going to begin our project but we know that's not enough money to what we want to do and the kind of library we want to have. So we're going to go and issue debt for the remaining amount of money so that we can do this all at once so that we can do the infrastructure piece as well as do all of the renovations that we need to do to bring our library current with all the things that Jeannie wants to do. And so if we had to pay as you go, that means we're probably talking about saving some money and putting it aside and not having a library build until you know, 2030. And, you know, that's not what we want to do. We want to go ahead and issue debt, get it done today uh, with the fire station. We're not going to set aside cash. We're going to go ahead and finance that fire station or our intention, I should say, is to finance that fire station 100% with debt proceeds and just pay it off over the next 30 years. Now, Chair Soda, your question about what happens if Measure J sunsets. So great question. Uh, our financial advisor has modeled this for us. We have, in the next 10 years, we will have $100 million of the city's debt come off the books. So what our intention is, if we can't extend Measure J, and it does indeed sunset, what will happen is we're going to pay the debt proceeds out of the Measure J fund for the next 10 years. When all this debt comes off our books, the general fund will be able to absorb the fire station and the library debt. And, and, and that's what we'll do. We'll pay for the debt service out of the general fund. Um, but as everybody knows, we want to extend that at some point in time. Uh, uh, but, but that's the plan. So we're going to stick with the facts right now. And the facts are Measure J is going to sunset. And so we're going to pay the debt service with Measure J funds until it sunsets. And then $100 million is going to come off the books the general fund will be able to absorb this new debt service payments and it, it we will have it will have very minimal impact to the city and then so in thinking of the library thinking of fire station one if it takes i mean it sounds like hopefully we know what's happening with the library before june but in case it we didn't right mm -hmm. your recommendation would not be to add more set aside for the library even though we have an upcoming library expense correct that that's a yes, that's correct. Uh, my my recommendation would be to not set any more aside for the library, because we want to go ahead and and issue debt for that. And the same with the fire station as well. We I I think we could our funds could be better used in other areas. Okay. Any other questions? We also have Al Jones, who's um on the library um trustees board um and Jeannie here as well, if there's any other kind of library specific questions. Good luck. We're looking forward to seeing what happens. Uh, Al Jones, yeah. 
Can you hear me okay? I hear you great. Oh, great. Okay. Yes. Let me, by way of introduction, I'm Al Jones. I'm a trustee of the, the Palm Springs Public Library. I'm also its treasurer, and I'm also the liaison from the trustees to Measure J, as well as to the uh, Public Library Foundation. I'm engaged in a, a few other uh, community activities as well. But very briefly, I wanted to extend my appreciation both to Jeannie uh, for her excellent expl explanation, as well as to Chris. Chris has a very firm grasp of what we are. I also wanted to express to you on behalf of the trustees our appreciation for your support, and of course, to request that we continue with that appreciation and your support uh, when we see the final figures that Chris will be presenting to the city council. This is an important endeavor to all of us within the community. And one of the remarks I made the other day, both to the trustees as well as to the library foundation, one of the things we have to do is to share with the community what today's public library is all about. It is not the library that I had when I was in college in the 1960s and I went into catalogs, or card catalogs and the rest. The programming, if you're not familiar with the programming of the library, I know Jeannie can direct you to the right, right resources on the web. The, the, it's expansive what the library does. It is not the library of 10 or 20 or 30, 40 years ago. We need to do a really great job and the offerings and the utilization of the library is just astounding. So I just wanted to put in my two cents worth and also to introduce myself that I will be your liaison from the uh, public uh, uh, trustees of the public library so that I'll be available to, to meet with you and answer any questions or augment anything that Jeannie says. She's the expert, of course. Uh, we're just the board. So thank you for this opportunity, uh, Naomi, to, to share that with you. Great. Thank you so much for being here. I'm sure we'll chat more throughout the spring. Okay. Well, thanks for this heads up, Chris. Um, we will hear what how council approaches this too. You said January 11th, right? That's correct. Yeah, I would encourage every member of the commission uh, to to either watch that or be a part of that uh, night because it's going to be a big library discussion and it just uh, further educates everybody about what's going to happen. So I'd encourage all the commission to uh, at least watch online. Well, that it takes us to um, commissioner members, comments and requests. Uh, anybody? Thanks, Jeannie. Um, any uh, comments, requests, things to keep in mind for next month? Okay. Thank I, I'll just just do your last minute shopping in Palm Springs and add to the Measure J fund. <laughs> Going above Chris and beyond is all for that. <laughs> duty. <laughs> that's right. I, I, that's going to be my excuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We'll see you in uh, what March, April. <laughs> um, well, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we'll wrap up. Mm, yeah, Chris. Uh, Naomi, can I can I talk a little bit about? Uh, oh the, yes, I'm sorry, I was supposed to bring that up. That's okay. That's mm -hmm. okay. Um, I just wanted to mention so a couple of things, and I and we should have put this on the agenda, and it's my fault I didn't do it. But um, all meetings now will be conducted in person. Mm -hmm. So uh, our meeting in January, I believe it's January 21st. Melissa, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, that uh, we're um, going back to the pre-COVID pre -COVID days, and uh, we have to conduct all these uh, commission meetings in person. Uh, what the commission has, what the council has decided upon is that if the public wants to attend this meeting and they want to attend it via Zoom or make comment, uh, public comment via Zoom, they can. However, uh, and they can do that, that's fine. Um, but all the commissioners uh, need to be uh, present uh, at uh, in person, if they if they are going if the commissioners are going to attend, they need to be in person, and uh, at the city hall we will hold these we will hold the meetings. They'll be in the conference room that's right next to the city hall uh, city council chambers. And the next meeting is January eighteenth. Oh, eighteenth. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Um, so that uh, is a very important piece. Uh, a couple of things about can that. I, can I just ask one thing? Um, mm -hmm. And this is mostly for. Um, Vice Chair Robin and maybe Commissioner Futter. So pre-COVID, when we did our in-person meetings um, in the conference room, it we couldn't get virtual um, 
calls. Like we couldn't do comment public comments, both virtual and in person and all public comments um, had to be in person. And so I just wanna like triple confirm that, I mean, we've been three years in a pandemic, so I'm assuming the capabilities in that room have gotten better, but it might just be helpful to clarify for anyone who's watching. It does seem like that has been added to that room in, in a way that we didn't have that in 2019, right? Yeah, great, great question, Chair Soda. Yes, that's correct. Uh, the AV capabilities in that room are much better. Uh, we'll be able to have public comment uh, uh, by Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, you know, if anybody wants just to listen, you know, uh, like we have a couple of participants tonight doing that, that's fine as well. The public can also choose to come to the uh, to the meeting as well. Uh, we have chairs set up, uh, uh, you know, outside of the table, the large conference table that we'll be sitting at. Um, but yes, uh, the AV capabilities have been improved. Great. Uh, just a couple of couple, a couple of things. things. Just a couple of things on this. Um, so <clears throat> we've got two alternates on the commission. So if somebody's on vacation or somebody's traveling, uh, it's it's probably not necessary for you know. It's okay to not to, to not be uh, there because we've got plenty of people to on the commission for a quorum. If a commissioner chose as they were traveling or out of town to want to zoom in, then we would have to post their location uh, on the agenda because it becomes a public meeting and a public person could show up at wherever they're at uh, <laughs> and, and sit and watch. So uh, our recommendation is just you know, if, if you're if you're not feeling well or if you're out of town or traveling, just let us know. Uh, I'm certain that we would have a quorum. Uh, you know, Melissa will organize all this stuff and and be sure that it's there. But, uh, you know, um, we are going to you know, all commissioners are, you know, if 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 you're going to be part of the meeting, uh, you have to be present in person at City Hall. So uh I just wanted to mention that. And one other thing I'd like to mention too is the city. Of, so every, all the commissioners on measure day commission have a Palm Springs email address. And our city attorney has recommended that we use those email addresses uh, whenever we communicate together. Um, I would just caution all the measure day commissioners that if we do, when we do use these email addresses, that they are, um, that they can be uh, um, accessible. Can be, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, sorry. Yes, they can be. So uh, you know, public records request comes in, and they want all the commissioners' uh, comments uh, through email. Then your you know your emails could be um, you know subject to that. So, uh, but we are going to use them anytime Melissa communicates out to the commissioners. We're going to use those email addresses. So um, if you could check those periodically, then we would appreciate it. Uh, but that is our going to be our method of communication with all the commissioners will be those email addresses and not any of your personal uh, email addresses. And, and and if you guys could take the time now to make sure that your emails are working properly. So that way, when we do decide the official date of when to start using these emails, we're ready to go. Couple of questions around um, the emails. Um, so, and also just for the full commission, you know, I think this is going to be really helpful in making sure we're compliant with the Brown Act as well, um, which is also really important uh, for transparency purposes. Um, the other piece, though, I guess if we're meeting in person, do we still need the calendar invite? I'm, um, I'm just wondering if then our calendar invites only going to that work calendar or the city calendar I don't know if that... the zoom links or yeah like you send the calendar invites right now and if you send it to a work email then not only do we need a work email but we have to set up a work calendar like a city calendar I'm sorry good question I'm not sure if it if it I'll get back to you on that one I also don't know if a calendar is necessary because if we're meeting in person, I don't know if the Zoom link is necessary either. But no, the Zoom link I, will I, not be necessary. The Zoom link will not be necessary, but I think a good calendar hold for you guys to be aware of, you know, the next meeting is good. So um, I'll definitely send you guys an updated calendar invite to your 
person or to your city issued emails. Yeah. Yeah. I guess my question then is we have to set up a both an email and a calendar with the city email. Does that make sense? Because it won't show up on our calendar. Yeah, I, I, yeah, you're right, Chair Soto. That, yeah, you'll want to make sure that your Outlook calendar is with your email address. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah. So I'll, I'll get with IT and see, give you guys instructions on that. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, well, with that, um, I will add an additional email uh, to check my phone, initial inbox, <laughs> uh, to be compliant. Um, it's best practice. So I totally understand that. Um, any other, thanks for going over those, Chris. Any other comments or requests? Seeing none, we'll close out the meeting a little bit early. Enjoy the rest of your December with family, with friends, doing whatever you want. Enjoy. Have a good one. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.